finish chapter 8. Originally, I planned to have chapter 8 test on uh, this coming Tuesday, but I decided that um, you probably need more time and I also need more time. So I'm going to continue chapter 11. We're going to skip chapter 9 and 10. Chapter 11, we're going to cover two sections, 11.1 and 11.2. And let's say we're going to have our test for chapter 8 and 11 on April 30th, which is Thursday. So the 1 o'clock class will have test uh, during the class time and the 3 o'clock class will have the test during the class time. And I will email everybody again, including the homework, right? So let's look at 11.1. This section is called goodness of fit, all right? So let's go over some important notation first, all right? The first uh, notation is O, capital O, it represents the observed frequency of an outcome. So in this section, we deal with frequency, right? E, again, capital E, this is the expected frequency of the outcome. So what you expect, um, and the O is what you observe. <clears throat> K, small k, is represent the number of different, different category of an outcome. And N represent the number um, the total number of trials, all right? We're gonna go to this in the example, but I just wanna tell you what each uh, notation represent. And um, we're gonna stay, start from state the null and alternative hypothesis. In the null, you will state something in this meaning, all right? You're gonna state that uh, observe and expected a match in that meaning. Um, alternative will be observe and expected are not match. And this section is not going to be a bell shape, it's always going to be rice cube, all right? It's always going to be rice cube, and the number on the horizontal is going to start from one. The shaded area is always going to be to the right, and it's going to be um, right rice cube and right tail test, and alpha is the shaded area. We're going to use table A4, it's called a uh, chi-square table. Uh, look like capital X. All right, this is called chi square. It's on in the book. It's on page six eighty seven. All right, um, and degree of freedom. The notation is DF. You get it from n minus one. Test statistic, and this is the formula for test statistic. You're gonna subtract the uh, expected frequency from observed squared and divide by expected frequency. Now the E is come from N, which is number of trial times probability. Probability, sometimes they will give it to you. Sometimes you have to calculate it yourself, depend on the question. And if the test statistic fall in the critical region, the critical region here is a shaded area. You would reject H0. So you would reject that the two are match. So basically they're not match. All right? Otherwise, do not reject H0. So let's look at the first example, all right? And American wallet will, will contain 18 red numbers, 18 black numbers, and two green numbers, all right? The following table show the frequency uh, with, with the ball land on each color in 200 trials. So you play 200 times. At the 5% significant level, do the data suggest that the wheel is out of balance, all right? So um, <clears throat> so you play 200 trams. This is the color. You have red, you have black, you have green, all right? Um, the observe is when you play, you see that it's land on the red 88 times, on the black 102 times, and on the green uh, 10 times. Um, I don't have room, but let's finish the table first, and then I'll go back to this, this side later, all right? So I'm trying to calculate this. So this will be your O, all right? Capital O, or the observed frequency. Next, you need to find the P. P is the probability, all right? They didn't give it to you, obviously. But as you can see, um, the wheel contain 18 red, 18 black and 2 green. 18 plus 18 is 36. 36 plus 2 is 38. So they have 38 slot. So you would 
expect that it's going to land on the probability of landing on the red going to be 18 over 38. All right. Um, and you would expect for the black is the same, which is 18 out of 38. The green, you would expect it to land 2 out of 38. So they didn't give you the probability, but you have to calculate that. That would make sense if it's balanced. Uh, the next one I need, I have the O, I have the P, N, okay, N is 200 here. In this case, 200. So I need the E, and E is N times P. E is always N times P. So E is N times P. So you would multiply 200, which is over here, times its probability. Since I don't have the room, I'm just going to give you the number. So this one turned out to be 94.7. All right. Next one also 94.7 and 10.5. All right. Okay, you would expect that it would land on the red about 94.7 times, but it's ran only 88 times. You would expect that it's going to land on black 94.7 times, but it's land 102 times. And same thing as green. Green is pretty close, 10 and 10.5, all right? So you want to see that at 5% significant level, do we have enough, suggest, uh, enough evidence to suggest that the wheel is out of balance? So I have to calculate the test statistic, which is the formula over here, all right? So it's going to be O minus E quantity square over E. All right, so your O will be, for the first row, will be 88 minus E. For the first row, your E would be 94.7. You're going to square this and divide by E. All right, and I calculate this is 0.474. All right, the second one, the second row is going to be O, which is 102, minus E, which is 94.7, square, divide by 94.7, all right, and I calculate this is 0 0.563. And the last one, my O will be 10 minus E, which is 10.5. Quantity square divided by E, which is 10.5. And I get 0 0.024. And as you can see, test statistic, you have to sum all of them. So I'm going to add all this column. So my test statistic is 1.1.061. All right, let's continue our example um, because I, I don't have room. Um, that's why I go back to the no and alternative now. All right, so um, the no, you're going to say that the observe and expect that I match. Match means the wheel is not out of balance. If they match, then they're not out of balance. Not match in this case. I forgot the T. So it's mean the wheel is out of balance. All right. So <clears throat> we did calculate the test statistic is 1.061. All right. Um, again, I did mention that it's going to be right skew and right tail. Um, alpha is 5%. So it's going to be 0 0.05. And alpha is always the shaded area. Um, you're going to use table A4. The table A4 is in, on page 687 in your book. All right. Degree of freedom is K minus 1. 
K is the number of category. So we have three here, red, black, and green. So three minus one is two. So you're gonna look in the table, um, degree of freedom is two, and the significant level is 0 0.05. The number is gonna be 5.991. Again, uh, the number on the horizontal always going to start from zero. So 5.991 is somewhere here. Now our test statistic is 1.061. So if the test statistic for in critical region, critical region is the shaded area, you would reject H0. Otherwise, do not reject H0. Uh, 5.9 is over here. 1.06 is someone, somewhere to the left. All right, somewhere to the left here. So um, it doesn't fall in the critical region, so do not reject H0. We don't reject H0. The question is, at 5% significant level, do the data suggest that the wheel is out of balance? So we do not reject H0. So at 5% significant level, the data do not provide sufficient evidence to conclude that the wheel is out of balance. Even though the number is not perfect match, but you don't, you don't have enough evidence to, claim to, to, to say that it's the wheel is out of balance. Hi everyone, let's look at our last example for 11.1. Uh, most of you probably you know m and m candy and if you look in the back of the m and m candy they claim that they have a certain percent of different color for this example we have 16 percent of green 20 percent of orange 14 percent of yellow 24 of blue 13 of red 13 of brown well as you can see it's hard to find the red and the brown a lot of them is blue and yellow. So let's say we want to test their claim, all right? So first thing, you're going to state the null and alternative hypothesis. Null, you will say the frequency of the observed and the expect a match. So if they match, we're going to say that the color distribution is the same as their report. Um, not match, we're going to say the color distribution of M and M is different from what they report, all right? Um, it's going to be right skew, Chi square, um, uh, right skew, the shaded area is always to the right. You're going to use table A4. Degree of freedom is 6 minus 1. 6 is category. In this case, we have red, orange, yellow, and so on. So there are 6 of them. So 6 minus 1 is 5. So chi square of 0 0.05, if you look in the table, is going to be 11. 0.071. So somewhere here. All right. So let's say um, this this problem they give you the O. All right. But in real life, you can go and buy a lot of M and M and count on your own how many red, how many orange, and then you can eat it. All right. <laughs> let's say you have thirteen red, twenty five orange, eight yellow, and so on. So all together, you have a hundred M and M. All right. And then P is the probability. In this case, they give it to you over here. All the percent here is probability. You have to convert to decimal, so 0 0.13, 0 0.20, and so on. Now we're going to calculate the expected frequency. The formula is N times P. My N is 100 here, and my P is probability. So 100 times 0 0.13 is 13, 100 times 0 0.13 to O is 20, and so on, right? That's your E. This is my test statistic formula. I didn't put the sigma here, but I'm gonna add the last column. So it's O minus E quantity squared divided by E. So your O minus your E squared divided by E, I got zero. Look at the second row, O minus E square divided by e, I got 1.25. And you keep continue for all of them. And then the test statistic is the sum of all of this, all right? You add all of this last column, this is your test statistic. Uh, let's go back to the graph. 11.071 is here. So 6.67 is to the left. 
so it's somewhere to the left here so it's not in the shaded area it doesn't fall in critical region so do not reject H0 we don't reject that so we have enough evidence to support the claim or you can state at 5% significant level that is enough evidence to support the claim that the uh, distribution as report all right um, I want to mention, um, so we finished 11.1. I want to mention uh, the homework uh, on number 9 a little bit because I know you might get confused. They talk about two peas, yellow and green. You have yellow smooth, yellow wrinkle, uh, green smooth, and green wrinkle. And the ratio, they give you 3, uh, 9, 3, 3, 1. If you add all this ratio, you're going to get 16. So probability of each type will be 9 over 16, 3 over 16, 3 over 16, and 1 over 16. Alright, have a good weekend. Bye.